stories this evening. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits. President Akufuado cut sod for construction of Tamale Interchange under the Sino Hydro Master Project Support Agreement. Irate residents of Takwa and Western Region give government a two week ultimatum to fix their road or face their wrath. Also ahead this evening, audit service to sanction road contractors who fail to adhere to specifications. And statistical service to go beyond releasing inflation figures by providing analytical reports. On the international front this evening, Zimbabwe's President Emerson Nangagwa pledged to facilitate exhumation and burial of victims killed in a state crackdown in the 1980s. The details of these stories and much more news coming to you live here on News 360. As always, our bulletin streams live all across the world on TV3 Gone on Facebook as well as on 3news.com. Let's go on to our first story this evening. And President Kofuado has cut sword for the construction of the Tamale Interchange under the Government of Ghana Sino Hydro Master Project Support Agreement. The intervention is intended to ease vehicular traffic in the Tamale Metropolis. The launch of the Government of Ghana Sino Hydro Master Project Support Agreement and sword cutting for the construction of the Tamale Interchange marks the official commencement of the $1.5 billion infrastructure project across the country. The Tamale Interchange is expected to link the Kumasi Road through the Point Seven Road, the Central Taxi Rank, the Central Market Intersection with the Malcolm Road and Bogatanga Road. The Roads and Highways Minister Kwesia Mwakwata reiterated government's commitment to improve road infrastructure across the country. President Ikufuado is confident the project will see Ghana experiencing a significant change in its road infrastructure. Each of the 16 regions is set to benefit from the Sino Hydro arrangement with hospital projects, extension of electricity to rural communities, and construction of court and residential buildings for the judicial service, landfill sites, and industrial parks set to be undertaken. The president again outlined areas where the project will benefit. Construction of Accra inner city roads, a total of 84 kilometers of roads located in Trobo, Anyasa Utuo, Doma, Kwabinya, Adenta and Teshi will be constructed. Lot 2, Construction of Kumasi and Mampong inner city roads. A total of 100 kilometers of inner city roads will be constructed in Kumasi and Mampong. In Kumasi, the effective road networks are in Menshia, Swami, Tafo, Tankrono, Asokwa, Kwadasu, Ufuriku, Subi, Ishayasu, and Bantama. The president charged the sector ministry to ensure the project are completed within the 30 months schedule. Well, the minority in parliament has been raising questions about the value for money audit on this particular project and are questioning the Roads and Highways Committee of Parliament for not you know, uh, asking for it. The Information Ministry has been addressing the press, also saying that the approval is not indeed subject to whether or not there is supposed to be a value for money audit or otherwise. So let's get some understanding to this. I've been joined in studio by Obing Ayirebi. He's a chairman of the survey Committee of the Quantity Surveyor of the Ghana Institution of Surveyors. He joins me in studio. Thank you for your time. Good evening to you. Sir. Thank you. Now, I'm sure you've been following, if not, uh, what the, the concerns the minority have been, has been raising about this particular you know, project. We've seen a value for money audit um, for the uh, roads in Accra. But when we say value for money audit, let's start off with that. Exactly what do we mean? What did you do in this process? 
Um, thank you. Um, thank you, our viewers. Uh, when we say value for money audit, we are not looking at the economy of the infrastructure or any facility alone. When we talk about value for money, we want to look at the total economy involved. We also want to look at the efficiency of the facility. Okay. We also want to look at the effectiveness of the facility and how sustainable that facility is. So value for money, typical value for money come in four major components and they all come together to give a value for money to the client. I see. And so uh, the economics obviously has to do with the figures and that's what the minority has been raising questions about. But did you do the value for money audit? for this particular Tamale interchange with the present cuts yeah, so the, 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 the value for money uh, audit was referred to the institution sometime in December last year and some of our members worked on that. I see. Yes. So the there's value a value for, for money yes. audit on the Tamale yes, interchange. Yes, the value for money audit was done. I, I wouldn't want to uh, narrow it to the Tamale interchange alone. Mm is the Sino Hydro project. So all, Virtually all the all projects, the, the value for money. And all the other yes, infrastructure and, yeah, projects. Yeah, we have the competences. Yeah, we have the competences. And some of our members were involved in the value for money audit for the Sino project in total. The $2 billion. Yes. So every infrastructure project, you have been involved in drafting or doing a value of money. Value of money, as and when it is referred to the institution. Uh, mind you, as a professional body, periodically, uh, such requests are referred to us, both from the government agencies, from private organizations, even religious organizations. It's not only for value for money. A whole range of professional services uh, are usually referred to the institutions. And uh, when it comes, uh, normally the president constitutes the committee and all the various professionals in them, their, their expertise are taught uh, to be able to come out with proper value for money. Okay, but so which which institution or government agency did you make the report available to? For this one particular, is the Ministry of Roads and Highways Ministry that brought the request in right. far way back in December. So you completed the value for money audit for this project way back in December. No, oh, the I think the from I'm just from the uh, secretariat. I, I think the report, the draft final report, uh, was sent submitted to the ministry somewhere for uh, April. If my yes, of April of this year. I see. Yes. And so some work has actually That's about gone some five days ago. Four April, yeah. Before this the final draft. The final yeah, draft for for the Sino uh, uh, Sino Hydro project. We is it's not a singling out. You, you, you see, right. the, the it's a whole component. You see, if you are doing value for one like I I mm -hmm. initially started, we're not looking at just the cost. Anybody who says oh, value for money is cost, that person probably don't well, understand well, but, but, but the, cost the extent for the cost component. There are cost the components, okay. but you see, a project right. might cost, uh, say, one million. Somebody will look at it, oh, this is expensive. No value for money. When you speak like that, then it means you lack some knowledge. Right. You don't look at the cost alone and talk. Because you need to look at the cost vis-a-vis -vis the effectiveness of the project vis-a-vis -vis the efficiency of the project, vis-a-vis -vis how sustainable it is, then you can come out and say, indeed, I have my value for money. Let me give you an analogy. Okay. Maybe very quickly because of... Yeah, that. very quickly. Let me give you an analogy. You probably can go to Cantaman to and buy a shirt. You right. go to a boutique and buy a shirt. You can say, ah, I've got a value for money. Because for all you know, the Cantaman to uh, attire, you can wear it over a long period. Right. You can say, yes, I have value for money. But if you say you are just looking at the cost, you, you, you might actually not be uh, speaking to the, the concept of value Zeri, for money. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for your time this evening. I'm grateful. Uh, Obeng Ayerebi is, uh, is a quantity surveyor and also with the Ghana Institution of Surveyors, helping us to unpack all of some of these things that are concerns that the minority raised early on. But uh, away from that, irate resident of Takwa, still staying on road issues actually in the western region, they've given government a two-week ultimatum to fix their road or face their wrath. In a protest, they recounted several unfulfilled promises by different governments to give the mineral town a facelift. <laughs> For every 250 meters on the stretch, 
residents have mounted a barrier and burnt vehicle ties. The protesters, also known as concerned residents of Chakwa, have given the government one week to fix the road or will use an excavator to cut through the road. According to them, respiratory disease are now on the increase in Takwa Israel municipality due to the incessant dust emanating from the road. Pregnant women are also losing their pregnancies in view of the dumpy nature of the road, they claimed. The group said, despite the huge revenue government collects from various mining companies in Takwa, especially their roads, are in a sorry state. Ship owners, operators of hotels and eateries along the road also complain of low sales. President of the concerned residents of Takwa, David Kumi, insisted successive governments have not been fair to Takwa. He claimed that three months ago, the Minister of Roads and Highways came to inspect the road and promised the people that a contractor will be given the necessary funds to begin work on the road, but nothing has been done about it. Let's turn to some other news this evening as Amnesty International Ghana has petitioned Parliament to abolish the death penalty. Seven persons have been sentenced to death this year, bringing to 179 the total number of persons on the death row in the country's prisons. Here's a report by Godfred Tanam. Imagine being sentenced to death but not knowing when you will be executed or not guilty to the crime at all. That is the fate of the 179 individuals languishing in the prisons. Though Ghana is considered abolitionist in practice by Amnesty International because it retains a death penalty for ordinary crimes such as murder but has not executed anyone in the last 10 years. For years now, many have called for Ghana to abolish the death penalty, which has been spearheaded by Amnesty International. At the launch of the 2018 death penalty report, the human rights organization called for the abolition of the death sentence from the status book, stressing that there is no evidence the death penalty deters crime or improves public safety. For Ghana to join the League of Abolitions countries across the globe and show our commitment to human rights, we must expressly abolish the death penalty in the constitution for all crimes we must before we do the um, clearing from our constitution abolish the death penalty by replacing death sentence as, as a crime in our penal code director of the prisons in charge of technical services nelson dude said of the 179 on the death rule three are nigerians two Burkina Bays, one beninua and one british when they are brought into custody, it brings additional burden to prison administration because the security measures that you are supposed to put in place for such a prisoner is more stringent than that of the other category of prisoners. After the launch, the group marched to the Parliament House to present a petition calling for Parliament to abolish the death sentence. Pass a resolution for the government to ratify without reservations the second optional protocol to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights aiming at the abolition of the death penalty. The Majority Chief Whip Kwesi Amaya Chairman and Deputy Minority Leader James Kluchi Aveji received the petition on behalf of the Speaker of Parliament. Because we also work through committees in Parliament, Mr. Speaker will refer it to the appropriate committee to study the contents of the petition and make recommendations to the House. I assure you that action definitely will be taken on your petition so that whatever you state are reasons for what you are asking for, if Parliament agrees with you, you then hear uh, from Parliament. The theme for this year's report is End Death Penalty Now. No. Abolish now. Now, President Kofado has begun the first phase of his 2019 nationwide tour starting from the six newly created regions. Briefing the media on the President's itinerary, Information Minister Kojo Ponkroma said feedback from the tour will help the President in the delivery of government objectives.
According to the Information Minister, the President's tour comes just a day after his first quarter cabinet review to get first-hand information from his ministers. The tour, which is an annual event on the President's calendar, will see him interact with the chiefs and people of the various regions. He would also cut sort for various projects and inspect ongoing ones. First phase is taking him to the Western North, the Bono East and the Ahafo regions between today and Monday. Tomorrow, for example, he will also in the Western North region inspect the site for construction works at the new regional coordinating council that is being or is to be put up in Sifi Riosu. On Friday, for example, he will be in the Ahafo region. He starts the tour of the Ahafo region from Friday. On Saturday, again, he will be in the Ahafo region. He would inspect a uh, one district, one factory project at Tanoso, among others. And then on Sunday, for example, he'll be commissioning a health insurance building and a female ward at the Atebubu Government Hospital. Um, on Monday, he'll be in the Bono East region, where he would inspect a number of uh, projects there as well. The first phase of the tour will end on Monday, April 15. Now, the audit service has served notice to sanction road contractors who fail to adhere to specifications. The Assistant Auditor General Lawrence Ayagiba made this known in an interaction with the media during a tour of some selected road project sites in Accra. This is the first time since 2001 the audit service is inspecting and auditing roads to check on standards. The team's first port of call was the Shiashi Legon Road, which was constructed 11 years ago. The team checked the bitumen content, the thickness of the road, as well as the sand aggregate and measurements. In performance audits, if we find out, for instance, that this one didn't meet the specification, that is one thing. The contractor we blame, and the one supposed, supposed to be to supervise the, the work will also be held up responsible. There are two things. Either the guy who was asked to supervise didn't have the competencies to do it, or he didn't have the logistics to be here. The next stop was the Punglo Medina Highway. The Assistant Auditor General warned road contractors the service would take legal action if they failed to procure the right material. But just in case on this particular stretch, you later find out that the contractor did not meet the specifications and the contractor has already been paid, what happens then? But the contractor is, is a going concern. He's around. It's a contract. He can be recalled. That's why the law courts are there. We just send and they retrieve the money. The exercise intended to ensure value for money okay, okay. is to be extended to urban and feeder road. The service would also inspect buildings before the end of this year. Parliament has deferred approval of the 2019 GNPC program of activities amidst questions of over budgeting. The minority in Parliament has questioned aspects of the program which they say is fraught with illegalities. The Speaker deferred approval months after the Committee on Mines and Energy delved into the program. Minority ranking member on the Mines and Energy Committee, John Ginapo, raised questions of illegality on the work program. And so how can Parliament, Mr. Speaker, under your able leadership, approve 1.2 million, and then GMPC then presents 1.7 million billion to us and expects us to approve? Mr. Speaker, this is illegal. This is not partisan, Mr. Speaker. This is a serious matter. And it goes to the court. We cannot pass an appropriations bill or act only for GMPC to go violating it and expect this house to approve it. Mr. Speaker, I am pleading with the house. Let us do what is proper. Let us do what is right. If GMPC believes that 1.2 billion is more than what they require, they should justify that. And that should be captured in the budget and let us approve it within the Appropriations Act. But when you justify and we give you 1.2, and you turn around and come to us and tell us we should give you 1.7, it's absolutely illegal. But the chairman of the Mines and Energy Committee, Manuel Akwesi Jemfi, disagreed. Things are being done in the right way and there's no cause for alarm. Even the 250 million, the, 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 the payment obligation will not be on GMPC. Minister of Finance is coming to Parliament with the loan agreement 
and it is in the report. So it is not something that is going to burden DMPC's operation. Minister of Finance has taken over that 250 million, and they'll come to Parliament with a loan agreement with the terms and conditions for approval under the, 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 the Financial uh, Management Act. So these are things that at the committee we discuss. From the onset, questions have been raised on the amount of money being spent on programs such as corporate social responsibility. The Africa Center for Energy Policy has already questioned some allocations. Well, stay with us here on News 360. We've got some more news coming up shortly. Welcome back to News 360. Let's get into the business segment this evening, starting off with new government statistician, Professor Samuel Enim, who says the service will go beyond releasing inflation figures by providing analytical reports. He spoke with our reporter, Ebenezer Ajakumpwati. It's important we appreciate the link between inflation and key macroeconomic variables, one of them being the exchange rate. Again, in subsequent releases, we'll try as much as possible to link the inflation rate and its rate of sensitivity to variables such as interest rate, poverty, and unemployment. And from my training, I always say that you need to treat inflation just as we treat education within the social interventions and paradigm. So inflation from an economic point of view is very critical and underscores all the macroeconomic variables that we deal with as different economies. Professor Enim said management will consolidate the high standards of deliverable. Ghana Studies Car Service uses the Ghana Living Standards Survey as basis to identify commodities that are most consumed by Ghanaians and thereafter the weights that are associated with it. When I took office, I decided that we need to go back to what Ghana Studies Car Service has been doing in the past, where we go beyond using the Ghana Living Standard Survey to identify the basket and the weights that are associated with it. But make an attempt to go around the three zonal areas of the country and further validate this basket and the weight. He promised transparency. So the transparency is what I've tried to explain in terms of involving people in terms of how the um, basket is arrived at and how the weights are arrived at. One thing we're going to do in terms of transparency moving forward is that all these commodities are going to be made available on our website. If we paid particular attention to the definition, it talked about general and average. The basket of commodities will not be consistent across all individuals. So for instance, with the further disaggregation that was done, if you are a heavy consumer of local produce relative to import produce, you don't expect to see that general changes in prices, given what we just saw. So there's the need for Ghana Studies Card Service to put this data out there and show people the basket that we use, and people would be in the position to calculate their own inflation rate, depending on your own basket of goods that you consume. The Associate Professor of Economics of the Research, Innovation and Consultancy Directorate at the University of Cape Coast assumed duty on March 1. Now, the Ghana Gas Company says the tie-in of gas pipelines off the West Africa Gas Pipeline at the Takraje Regulation and Metering Station at Abwaje would be completed ahead of schedule. According to the Head of Communications at Ghana Gas, Ernest Owusu Bempa, more than 90% of the major works has been completed. Here's reports by Irama Smith. The country is experiencing sporadic power outages because of the temporal Well, we'll bring you that we'll bring you that report shortly by Irama Smith. Stay with us here on News 360. You're watching the business segment here on News 360. Remember, you can watch us live all across the world. It's 3news.com and TV3 Ghana on Facebook. In some other business news, internet penetration has resulted in millions of users having access to a vast content in the cyberspace. Online shopping, for instance, is fast becoming popular with many buying and selling using social media. But how safe and secure is it buying from online sources? In times past, 
People would travel to Europe or Asia to shop for products to sell. But the emergence of e-commerce stores is making it possible for people to shop online, while social media has also made it possible for them to market and sell the product without an office space or a boutique. Founded by 29-year-old entrepreneur, Yvonne's Javon business started off as a boutique, but with time has evolved to using social media marketing. I'm a salary worker and a family person, that is, I'm a married woman. And I can't always depend on my husband, though he's been supportive, but I one day sat down and decided to take this initiative to do buying and selling online, and I do offline too. She identifies desired fashion trends from a number of retail shops in America, China and Turkey, makes the order and pays online. When the clothes arrive, she begins to market them on her social media pages, usually Facebook, Instagram and on WhatsApp. She composes beautiful images and content to stand out on Instagram and Facebook. On a daily basis, I could make like 1,000 to 2,000 sales. In a good day, I could do like 3,000. Once the product is marketed online, she receives orders from her clients who are mostly scattered across the country. They screenshot the type of product they are looking for and then place the order. To improve service, she hires the service of a motor rider who comes early to pick up staff for delivery. And once the service is delivered, payment is done on receipt or through mobile money. But why do customers prefer to shop online? Because it's more convenient and um, you get to use your time for something better. The time you go to maybe Makola or Rollins Park to buy something, you use it to maybe study or do something else. For, I mean, originality's sake, originality sake, especially from um, Kiku and Amazon. You see, their stuff, they are not fabricated stuff like, you know, the Togo ones, as we say, is in Ghana. But those ones, we believe, I believe, is straight from, I mean, the box. Because it's comfortable. You don't have to walk to the markets with the stress of looking for what you are looking for. So, just for the comfort of it. Despite the ease and convenience of shopping online, the service also comes with certain challenges. But can these online classified businesses be absorbed from fraud? Sometimes, let's say you are urging for a hair, the hair comes and the quality is not as good as you thought it would be. Or you are buying a dress and it comes and it's not your size, it doesn't fit. And sometimes these shops don't accept the things back, so then you are at a loss. Sometimes you get something like 15 CDs, and I live in Tema, they might say they are from Kaswa, so delivery is 30 CDs, whilst what I'm buying is just 15 CDs. They will tell you, oh, this particular hair is a uh, 150 cities, but you pay shipment almost close to 100 cities, and that's one disadvantage of it. Well, certainly a lot more convenience there with online shopping. And that's how we wrap up the business segment here on News 360 this evening. There's a lot more business news on our website. It's 3news.com. Over to you, Alfred. Oh, thank you, Natalie, with business. Now, the Accra Breweries Limited has uh, launched the uh, mating edition of the Smart Drinking and Care campaign, which to encourage drivers to drive responsibly. The initiative is in partnership with the National Road Safety Commission, the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA, and the Motor Traffic and Transport Department of the Ghana Police Service, and is intended to reduce road accidents. The campaign is on the theme, Drink Responsibly Today to Safeguard Tomorrow. Legal and Corporate Affairs Director of Accra Brewery, Adjoa Abba Atha, cautioned drivers to check their cars before embarking on any journey and also reduce their intake of alcohol. The smart drinking is to reduce the harmful use of alcohol and the care campaign is to be safe on our roads. What we are doing today is to partner with government, DVLA, National Road Safety, MTCD, to figure out what would be best for all our drivers to do to ensure that the accidents are reduced on our roads. After this workshop, we have decided to come together to reduce the markings on our roads and brighten them better, and also to erect all posts that have fallen over. The Greater Accra Regional Manager of the Road Safety Authority, Catherine Hamilton, listed some causes of road accidents and urged drivers to observe road traffic regulations. 
during this easter season they should reduce their speeds they shouldn't drink and drive and then to pedestrians we are saying that they should cross the roads at designated crossing points where there are no designated crossing points they should look left and right then left again before crossing and then to motorcyclists we are saying that they should respect traffic regulations staff officer to the director general of the mttd Superintendent Samuel Sasumensa hinted a team will be set up to solicit public views on the commercial use of motorbikes following the high accident rate. In collaboration or in partnership with the Ministry of Transport and National Road Safety Commission, we realize that the speed at which the carnage related to motorbikes is increasing has to do with issues that has to do with people using motorbicycles for commercial purposes. And the issue is that whether to regularize or not to regularize. So a theme is basically going out through the nook and cranny of all Ghana to determine, to seek the advice of the general driving public whether or not to regularize. Being part of a global company which brews beer, Accra Brewery shares its smart drinking commitments and beliefs that underpin them through internal and external programs. A family physician at the Kodabu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Alan Steele Datsi, has underscored the need for comprehensive care for asthma patients. He made the observation at a business dinner organized by Holy Trinity Medical Center in Accra. Asthma is a chronic disease which affects the body airways by narrowing and swelling and produces extra mucus which can make breathing difficult, trigger coughing, recurrent episodes of wheezing, chest tightness and shortness of breath. According to the World Health Organization, 1,704 Ghanaians in 2017 died of asthma which affects at least 3 to 4 people a day. The meeting was aimed at improving the skill of doctors in the treatment of asthma and enlightening the public on the disease. It also involves comprehensive assessment, which I will talk about. Very importantly, what you call control-based management. The main thing about asthma management is managing to control the patient. Senior lecturer and gynecologist at Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Ben Anan, suggested a total cooperation between asthma patients and their doctors to minimize its threat. The important thing about care of asthma is that the patients themselves must have a good inhaler technique when it comes to their management. And then there needs to be a cooperation between the physician and the patient in the management of asthma. The continuous professional development is held to reform doctors in the field. In a bit to ensure that doctors are always on point, they know the latest trends in management of diseases because medicine is dynamic and over what was being done 20 years ago in the management of a particular illness must have changed or could change and therefore it's important that as a doctor who has finished school so many years ago and you are still in the practice, it's important that you update your knowledge on almost everything. Participants were updated on assessment control. The theme for the program was current management of asthma, a continuous professional development tuition. It's all live here on News 36. A reminder, we're live on DSTV Channel 279 all across the world on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. I urge Manchester United fans to still believe. It's 90 minutes of football. Hello, good evening and it's time for the sports here on News 360 with me, Theo Inyan. Now, the normalization special cap continues. It's match day four and Asante Kotoko extended your lead at the top of zone A in the normalization uh, you know, special cup with a 2-0 victory over regional rivals Ashanti Gold in Kumasi on Wednesday. Let's see the highlights. <laughs> So the man who just came on Collins Amiyao's cross yields dividend and look at it. So this is how he started. He decided not to take the first shot and the second with his left foot. Osai Ajiman tried to clear the ball from the lines. 
but they had gone beyond it. Skumansia Santi Koroko. Whichever way you look at it, no matter how beautiful or ugly it is, they have the lead here against their regional rivals, Ashanti Gold at the Kumasi Babara Sports Stadium. So, this is the second goal for Kumasi Asanti Koroko. Look at it. He started it all. He picked it up. Goalkeeper was committed. He went around the goalkeeper and played. The Porcupines getting that particular all-important three points. Now they beat Ashanti Gold by two goals to zero in zone A. And break home Chelsea were at the Golden City Park and lost by a goal to nil to Indiana Stars, the Fire Boys. And I'm going to be telling you exactly what this means for all the, uh, you know, the teams uh, in the standing subsequently. But Mediama Sporting Club also were at the Takwa TNA Park and they beat uh, Bicham United by three goals to two. The winner, a very dramatic one via the uh, penalty spot. Now we've got in zone B, Hearts of Folk winning uh, their game against Ebisuna Drives. Now that is only their second win in four games in this particular competition thus far. And uh, well, even with that, they are still on Sith in zone B. But Wafa are top of that particular group and that's because they have won uh, Karela United by two goals to zero. Elmina Sharks drawing 0-0 with Liberty Professionals and that is the first time they've dropped two points in the last three games. Uh, in Tarlite against Dreams FC is a game that is scheduled for tomorrow, so we'll bring you all the details to that later. But Asante Kotoko in zone A, they have nine points after four games. The Diana Stars follow very keenly. Two points adrift with seven points. Mediama Sporting Club have uh, six points in there, and then Ashanti Gold have five. Bichem United have four. Zero for Wild Stars, who are yet to kick a game. And then there's Brekum Chelsea and 11 Wonders, who have played two and three respectively with zero points. In Zone B, this is exactly how it looks like. It's Wafa who are there with, uh, you know, eight points and are top of it. Liberty Professionals, remember, after that particular 4-0 win, it helped them a lot because now they have a better goal difference than Karela United, who both have seven points. But Elmina Sharks, they have six, same uh, number of points as uh, Kim Grant's Hearts of Folk with six, uh, you know, points. But uh, they actually, Elmina Sharks have a better goal difference of plus one. Dreams FC have four points. Inter Allies have two points. And then... Uh, uh, last year is a Bissouan Drafts with zero points. And that'll be all for the sports here on News 360. My name is Thierry Nyan. All right, so good evening. It's now time for some entertainment and lifestyle news with me, Nana Kwejadon. Starting off tonight, Ghanaian Afropop singer and songwriter Weala is set to embark on a musical tour to some selected European countries. Affectionately called the Lioness of Africa, Weala will perform alongside some big names during the tour, which begins in May and ends in August 2019. The tour will kick off with a historic live performance uh, in Slovenia on May 14. Weala will again grace festivals, including the Afro Finkston Festival uh, in Switzerland, uh, Migration Matters Festival in UK, and Kanako Africa Festival Berlin in Germany on July 4. All right, so yesterday uh, we gave you a story on music, of course. Obo Stena, as president of Musica, ends in June. Now, one of such contenders, or one of the contenders of the seat twice, Jedubele Ambele, ace high life singer, uh, joins me in the studio today. And I want to find out from him, basically, uh, his plans for this year. Of course, uh, we're looking forward to him uh, contending, or he's actually not contending. Good evening, boss. Welcome. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Uh, you've been at this for a long time. You mm. contested twice yeah. as musical president. Yeah. And uh, let me first ask you, what is your assessment of uh, Obor's tenor for eight years? Eight years. Well, out of ten, I'll give him two. Two over ten? Yeah. Obor um, brought some vibrancy, dynamism. Uh, the youth brought a lot of people together. Ghana music, uh, weak, uh, I'm, I'm with, and all of that. You say you give him two. Yeah. Why? Because all these things that you've made mention of, mm. um, I don't see any success that came out of you know, all these things that you've made mention mm. for of. For eight years? Yeah, for eight years, mm. yes. Because uh, that money, two million coming in, mm. that was the first time 
out of the union that since, allocation since, they, since it was started mm -hmm. i mean back um you know around about 70s yes up to now 80s, yeah uh, there was the first time mm. that an allocation of two million had come in mm. two million if you take it back to the old cities it's about 20 billion Yes. It's a lot of money mm. that can put back the union in, on its feet. Okay. And if so, the union is crawling at now, then I don't see... You, you tell me you've lost interest in running for it, uh, or you still have interest in it. Um, I've been getting calls. You know, mm. people are calling me and say, Jeru, I think this is the time for you to go and things like that. Mm. But if I look at what I'm doing now, mm. because I'm going on tour, European tour, in July, right. I'm going to come back in August. And in October, I'm going back again. Okay. So with a union, mm. of which that you're going to go for elections mm. around where in June? Mm. Yes, I need to have time for it. Okay. So, but for the tour, you would have st you would have stood for the president. Yes, I bet I'll be still, you know, thinking about it because mm. uh, you know, thinking about way back the eight okay. years and things like that. There are names that have come up uh, are in the seat. We have the likes of Bessa Simons, mm -hmm. uh, Richie of Links Entertainment. We have Apiatus and all the other guys eyeing for the seat. Uh, who would you throw your weight behind if uh, you are not going for the seat? None of them. Why? Because they are the ones that are behind a war. Apiatus is also there. Well, I don't know why Apiatus has to come in because Apiatus is not a musician. He's a studio engineer. Apiatus has been working with artists over the years. I mean, for over 20 years, he's been working uh, with artists, tried managing some artists here and there. You think he doesn't qualify to be there? If you tell me that the studio engineers are looking for presidents and things like that, yeah, that's the right place for him to be, not the musician's union. Wow. Because the musicians' union is, is there for the welfare of musicians. What, what, what would you have identified as a main challenge in the industry that you would have fixed if uh, given the nod as a president? The union has what? If you talk about the union is there for the welfare of musicians. So anything that has to rectify the, uh, the musicians and put the musicians back on, on its feet and everything, that's what needs to be done. Because these older musicians that have contributed a lot musically, to Ghana and music, right. what is in there for them? Wow. It's not that they're going around trying to um, solicit money and things like that mm. for them. Mm. What happened with that two million cities? Wow. What happened with that two million cities, Jerry Bleambule? Thank you so much for your time. Of course, if you change your mind and you want to go for the presidency, we will talk to you again. Thank My you. name is Dan Akwajrad. Of course, that's how we are wrapping up entertainment news tonight here on News 360. And there you have it. He gave a war to over 10 for his tenure in office. Alfred and Natalie, the two yeah, people standing Yeah, the semi-rapper man himself. <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. I like that song, Long Time Ago. Jimmy <laughs> and Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, great stuff. Yeah, I want to say thank you. thank you. On behalf of the rest of the team, we're grateful, as always. My name is Alfred Okansi. I'm Natalie Fords. There's a lot more news. It's on our website. It's 3news.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a lovely evening.